Hey folks, Jamie here. Thank you for tuning in. Before we get started, I would like for you to take a moment and go down below and hit the like and subscribe buttons. Maybe leave a comment. If you're really feeling generous, maybe share this video to your social media feeds. What that does is make it a lot easier for other people to find a moment of Tiki. I really appreciate it and it helps out a lot. Thanks. Now, on with the show. Welcome to another episode of A Moment of Tiki coming to you from the Lagoon of Mystery, my home tiki bar here in Central Texas. I have not done a book review in quite a while, mainly because they take a lot more effort and preparation than I really expected them to and a lot more than actually shows up on the screen. But uh, yeah, I don't really have a choice this time around because not often do we have something like this that comes around and is a veritable tiki event. This event being Oceanic Arts, The Godfathers of Tiki. This is an absolutely massive book of the likes not seen since uh, Sven Kirsten stunned the Tiki world and jump-started our Tiki revival with his book of Tiki and Tiki Modern and Tiki Pop. Uh, if anything, this is even more massive. It is incredibly lush. That's really the only the word I can use to describe it. Uh, there have been rumors that Oceanic Arts was putting together a book for many, many years, but you know, most of the time people just took those as rumors. There was no concrete evidence. Uh, it was all talk vaporware. Uh, if you have been a viewer of A Moment of Tiki, you will remember last summer I visited Oceanic Arts and Bob was kind enough to chat about the book for a little bit. And as you remember, this does have a really cool pulpy old time adventure style cover, just as he described. Uh, it's, you know, much more than expected and it's even more poignant because this book was announced and solicited alongside the announcement that Oceanic Arts was closing forever that Bob and Leroy were retiring <clears throat> so it is bittersweet that this book come out now now here's the thing this is a massive book it weighs more than some small children do. It's thick, it's lush, it's full color all the way through. It's privately printed uh, by Peekaboo Gallery. It's not by Macmillan or Tashin or anyone else. Um, so it's essentially self-published. Uh, and it's expensive. You pay for it. It's $145, and that's not even the most expensive version. There is a limited edition slipcase version that's even more. So many of you are out there thinking, is it worth it? <clears throat> and that's what I'm going to try and answer for you here with this sort of review. It's not a formal review. Because if you think you want this book, you need to get it now. It is very, very unlikely to ever be reprinted. Uh, that being the case, once it's sold out, and it's still available on the Peekaboo Gallery website for order, once it's sold out, there aren't going to be any more. And, you know, flippers are going to flip. So if you want one, you'd be paying 500, 600, or whatever the crazy asking price online, eBay, or wherever else will be. So, this is my service to you, and I have to say, I believe this is probably the most expensive book I've ever purchased, and I've got a few collector volumes of different things, but nothing like this. This is not a formal history of Oceanic Arts. There is a lot of information and history in there, but it takes the form 
of a narrative interview with Bob Van Oosting and Leroy Schmaltz. And the conversation continues in the margin of the pages, interspersed with lots of photography and lots of captions. And it's a fascinating read. They start off from their history where they grew up, how they met, went to college and began carving various South Seas masks and palm fronds and kikis and such, and how that spiraled and snowballed into what we eventually came to know as Oceanic Arts. Plenty tiki luminaries from yesteryear make cameo appearances. Eli Headley, who you know, was the original beachcomber and gave us Bamboo Bin. It touches the obsession with Hawaii and South Pacific from Rogers and Hammerstein and Tiki Apartments, the craze for making Tiki Apartments and building them to uh, emulate uh, South Seas Paradise to varying degrees. Uh, the Mai Kai makes an appearance. It's, uh, there, are all, there, there are blueprints and designs and photographs of almost every Tiki build out that these guys from Oceanic Arts had a hand in. It's, you know, a, a cornucopia of wooden Tiki goodness. Uh, there is an entire section devoted to Bob and Leroy's uh, South Seas trip in the 50s. Um, actually, 1960 is when they made their big trip. They went to Tahiti and Papua New Guinea and just learned and took in so much of the artistry of, of the native indigenous art and sculpture and style and they did this because they wanted they wanted to be authentic to Hawaii but also they were looking to expand uh, they wanted to offer more various cultures uh, more variety not just carving Hawaiian statues or Easter Island uh, they wanted to know and learn from those who actually made these sculptures they wanted to be involved they wanted to get their hands dirty they wanted to immerse themselves in the cultures so they could be as authentic as possible. And the photos that are included here are just magnificent. Uh, and, and that's what it comes back to is just the spectacular detail just showing everything that they created through their catalogs and the original masks that served as the templates for what they later did and built. Uh, the lighting is just amazing that it's represented here. Uh, all the various incarnations and styles and offshoots and just crazy ideas that they jotted down on paper as a potential sketch and custom uh, designs and layouts and just uh, it's astonishing. The ceramic bowls and tiki mugs, everything. I, it's so overwhelming just the eye candy alone all the carving uh, the the weapons if you have an interest in this if you want to see how they interacted with uh, the elvis productions the elvis hawaii productions and provided the background and the decor for that uh, outfitted all of these different Tiki palaces over the years and the decades, it's all here. It's all here and then some. This is an astonishing book. It's magnificent. Uh, it's, you know, and I can't tell you whether to buy it or not. You have to make that decision. But if your interests lie in the realm of Tiki and you have gone out of your way to seek out Sven Kirsten's out of print books on Tiki, then you will absolutely want to get this. I have to say though, this isn't the only option. 
whether you want this or not, whether you are going to dig deep to come up with the funds to purchase this or not, or if it's just $145, $150 is just outside of your means to indulge even the deepest tiki scratch, tiki itch that needs to be scratched, there is an alternative. Peekaboo Gallery has also produced a catalog of the auction. And I say this, today is actually the second day of the Oceanic Arts auction. And it's no less insane than the first day. This book catalog is literally a catalog. It shows every single item from Oceanic Arts that is going up for auction over this weekend. And if you want to get a good laugh, look at the suggested prices uh, for these items. Every auction catalog generally comes with uh, estimated price range that a particular piece going up for auction is expected to command once the bidding is finished. And these range, you know, $500 to $800, $50 to $100, uh, $1,000 to $1,500, things like that, just to give you a general idea of what this particular item is going to command. I looked at the numbers in here when I got this in and I laughed. I could not stop laughing. Online, someone asked me uh, how many pieces was I going to bid on, which ones did I plan to get myself. I don't have that kind of money. I have the money, I have the means, I'm fortunate enough to have the means to possibly get a few items from this catalog at these prices listed. But I looked at these and I said, there is no way. Not with Oceanic Arts being an institution of 60 years, not with Bob and Leroy being patron saints of the Tiki community. Every single item in here, I said, is going to go way, 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 way beyond the suggested bid price and that has been borne out. The first day of the auction uh, items here were going for four, five, even six times the suggested price. At the end of the day, uh, the calculated total of auctioning uh, amounted to more than $800,000. $800,000 changed hands for the items that were up to bid with another full day to go. It would not surprise me, I have not checked the results today, but it would not surprise me if they're pushing two million by the end of all the live and online auctions. It's just astonishing the different regions and populations and stuff that have been bidding against each other. Uh, there was a California, Texas, uh, Santa Monica and Dallas, uh, just a bidding war for certain items. It's terrifying and exhilarating and magnificent and terrible. There is emotion involved here. People are not bidding for individual items. They are bidding on history. They are bidding on the mystique, the majesty, the goodwill that these men with oceanic arts have built up over six decades. There are going to be no more Leroy and Bob items produced. Uh, you cannot get any more of their lamps. These are the people who outfitted Disney and supplied the lighting for the Enchanted Tiki Room. It wears out, folks. The lighting inside and outside, the bamboo, the sculptures, all those de decorations, the masks when you walk into Adventureland, that's oceanic arts. In the California or Florida weather, those things deteriorate over time and they must be replaced. Oceanic arts are the ones who replace that. This is part of the history that people want to grab, they want to own, they want to have. They want the Mai Tai, they want Tiki mugs. People are bidding on tiki mugs that weren't produced by Oceanic Arts, but were just maintained in Oceanic Arts collection. Just the aura and the mystique of that is driving, driving insane bidding wars. 
And people are taking solace in the fact that this is Leroy and Bob's retirement that they're funding. And that is a tremendous gesture of goodwill. This auction catalog book is $85, which is still steep. It's not cheap. But again, this isn't something that you will find for 10 bucks at half price books or on eBay or anything like that down the line. Once these are gone, they're gone and they're never gonna sell for this price again. The most value of the auction book is if you are a creator, if you are a maker, if you are an artist with a tiki bent who likes to design lamps, if you like to carve wooden sculptures, this is a wealth of research material. It's a unparalleled reference book. Everything that they did, possibly not everything, but everything that existed at Oceanic Arts for the past 60 years. Uh, if they made a prototype mask that others were designed based on, or a weapon, or a sculpture, or a Papua New Guinea shield, or a sculpt hook, or any of those items, a yam mask, it's going to be in here. It is almost overwhelming to see the variety. And if you are an artist who wants to copy one of these to the best of your ability and homage to Bob and Leroy's work, this is the book you want. If you are someone who is aspiring to create your own aesthetic in the tiki sphere, in the tiki realm, this is what you want because you can see what others have done and use that as inspiration for your own creative ideas. Regardless, either one of these books released at any point over the past 10 years would have been an event in and of themselves. To release them simultaneously with the closing of Oceanic Arts forever is mind-boggling. It's the best of times, it's the worst of times. These are lush, they are lavish, they are labors of love in a literal sense of the phrase. This is not something that has ever happened before, and this is not something that is ever likely to happen again. There are other places that supply bamboo and matting, and there are other retailers online that have masks and others that have tiki mugs and people who sell jade tiles, but there is no one who offers all of it. Perhaps someday in five years, in 10 years, in 20 years, one of these businesses will grow up and encompass everything that Ocean Oceanic Arts once was and will supply Disney and supply the Mai Kai with new lamps and ceiling lanterns and tiki designs and all of the above. But they don't exist yet. And they're not likely to ever achieve the degree of goodwill and fame as Oceanic Arts. As of this recording, both books are still available on the Peekaboo Gallery website. I don't know how many they published, I don't know how many they printed, I don't know how many have sold, and I don't know how many remain in their warehouse. But if you have any desire at all to get one of these, whether it's the $85 auction gallery guide, which really compares to some um, museum PNG art books that I have in price, quality, and volume, or the Godfather's of Tiki book, which, you know, this is not a small book, and this one dwarfs it. So, you know, if you just need something at your home to use as a weapon against intruders, either one of these would fit the bill very easily. I've got mine. 
I'm not about to sell them, so if you see any flippers on eBay, you know it's not coming from the Lagoon of Mystery. I've barely scratched the surface on what these books have to offer, but I know they will keep me enthralled and entertained for many years to come. So, until next time, from the Lagoon of Mystery, aloha and happy reading. <laughs>